Researchers from India say they have funded cold fusion research for 50 scientists. Their results will be published in the July issue of Fusion Technology. Then we them in the summer. Embattled cold fusion proponents gained important endorsements today from two of the U.S. government's most prestigious research agencies, the Los Alamos and Oak Ridge National Laboratories. Other scientists revealed significant findings of tritium, a byproduct of fusion, and evidence of a nuclear reaction. When we see tritium result, great joy flows along the lab. It's a very exciting time. Bakris claims the defense industry has earmarked $26 billion to pursue tritium production. Only two other laboratories, Los Alamos and a lab in Bombay, Italy, have shown evidence of tritium. One down, one more to go. State regulators to... Nine. Scientists from around the world ended a three-day conference on cold nuclear fusion today. While participants continue to debate the controversial research, they agree this conference improved the communication between supporters and detractors. Organizers told news specialist Allison Barlow that should help the work progress in the coming year. After three days of meetings, Dr. Stanley Pons called the first annual nuclear fusion conference a success. It didn't convince the skeptics or stop the criticism, but it did decrease some of the tension after a year of conflict in the scientific community. The physicists are here. Uh, they have been quite open, quite negative, but on the other hand, constructive in many cases, and uh, we're certainly talking. People aren't so dogmatic. It, it looks like it's uh, been a success as far as getting the cards on the table. This morning, six of the 40 scientists who attended the conference held a two-hour press conference. In that briefing, cold nuclear fusion got some important endorsements from two government laboratories, Los Alamos and the Oak Ridge National Lab. As far as I'm concerned, it's unequivocal that people have been able to produce excess power and energy. Similarly, it's unequivocal that several researchers have observed the formation of tritium. Those are the two most salient points so far. Now that we have verified uh, our work and are confident of its uh, accuracy, there's no problem in, in talking to the press and, and giving out information. But there are still many critics. The professional journal Nature recently headlined one commentary, farewell, not fond to cold fusion, and another, the embarrassment of cold fusion. You know, last year this time, he wrote a paper, uh, an editorial, and said uh, the end of cold fusion. You know, so here it is a year later, and he's still saying it. Next year, he'll still be saying it. And when there's generators running, he'll still be saying it. And that's it. Hunt says he hopes that this conference will fuel productive and open discussion with critics in order to find answers instead of faults with cold nuclear fusion. Allison Barlow, Eyewitness News, Salt Lake City. Well, Kent says it's not the greatest forecast for skiers, but for those... A conference on cold fusion has concluded at the University of Utah. Impressive new evidence was presented for cold fusion at that conference. But still, skeptics remain unpersuaded and money is becoming scarce. KUTV's Rod Decker reports. Strong new evidence of First of all, was presented from the respected national laboratories. Dr. Ed Storms from Los Alamos. We should look more carefully and make sure that our, our experiments are done properly. But once they're done properly and we continue to get results that indicate that this phenomenon exists, then we have to start believing that it truly does exist. To understand the Impressive findings were reported by Dr. That, Charles Scott of Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Our colleagues at the National Laboratory feel that the information that we are reporting is creditable scientific information. So I think we've made great progress in that respect. Similarly, Dr. Scott has found heat in a closed cold fusion system, something critics said would help persuade them cold fusion was real. But the critics are not persuaded. Today, these scathing articles from the prestigious science magazine Nature arrived in Salt Lake City. Nature published for the first time work done by these U of U physicists last spring in Dr. Stanley Pond's lab. During the time that we were in Dr. Pond's laboratory, we saw no evidence for any known fusion reactions occurring in his lab. And Nature editorialized that cold fusion deserves unrestrained mockery and unqualified vituperation. So despite strong, positive results at the U of U conference, much of the scientific community believes cold fusion is undeserving even of reasoned debate. Rod Decker, KUTV News. Four Montana prisoners are on the... 
Cold fusion is either close to proven science or licensed magic, depending on who you believe. Many scientists at the Cold Fusion Conference at the University of Utah today said they have results confirming cold fusion. Editorials in Nature magazine said cold fusion is an embarrassment to science. KUTV's Rod Decker reports. Most papers at the conference presented evidence for cold fusion, and Dr. Martin Fleischman was pleased. There has now been such a substantial confirmation of the various aspects of the work which we described, first described in March. Strong evidence came from prestigious all, national laboratories. Dr. Charles Scott says he measures heat from cold fusion in a closed system. As far as I'm concerned, it's unequivocal that people have been able to produce excess power and energy. Unequivocal. 